Hello, this is David Bergantino, author of the Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror series. You're listening to the 80s Slasher Librarian's audiobook presentation of Help Wanted. Keep it scary out there. Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror, Help Wanted, by David Bergantino. Prologue. So you've come about the job, have you? Excellent. Freddy's always looking to bring some new blood into the boiler room. How did you hear about the position? Did you spot a newspaper ad? Or did you see the writing on the wall? <laughs> I think you'd find this job a killer. In fact... That's exactly what I'm looking for. A killer! Someone who likes to work with his or her hands. And maybe a chainsaw or a machete as well. You should already have relevant experience. But on-the-job training is available for those who show unusual promise. The squeamish need not apply. Now. You will be dealing with a lot of dead meat, but you won't be flipping burgers, and you won't have to wear a uniform. Though I recommend wearing clothes you don't mind getting a bit soiled. <laughs> a word of warning, though. Competition within the workplace can be fierce. There tends to be a lot of, uh, backstabbing. The kind done with real knives, sharp ones. So if you're still interested, I would be happy to take your application. It must be filled out completely. In blood, of course. Then come the interviews, a long, sometimes deadly, but necessary process. And if you make the cut, I'll hand you the keys to the company carnage and welcome you aboard. It'll be the kind of job offer you simply can't refuse. In the meantime, think of the following frightening fable as a training manual of sorts. An eye-opening introduction to the bright red... Oops, I mean the bright and gleaming future that awaits you. Chapter 1 Laura Walcott hated hospitals and all the deadly viruses that inhabited them. Reluctantly, she approached Springwood General's administrative offices. She kept her breath shallow, wishing that this would help to protect her, but fearing that it would actually make her pass out. The front desk was cluttered but unoccupied. No one was in the immediate front area. Behind the desk was a smoked glass door, across which danced indistinct shadows from within the office beyond. Laura's hand paused above a bell labeled, Ring for Help. She didn't really want help. She didn't really want to be here. And most of all, she didn't want to work here. But she needed a job so badly. That thought overpowered her temporary paralysis, and she tapped the bell. 
The shadows in the administrative office quickly reshaped themselves into recognizable human silhouettes. Laura braced herself. In this oppressive environment, she expected the worst. This was sure to be a depressing ordeal. She was used to working out in the sun and air with kids her age, not in some way station to a mausoleum. Laura suddenly felt the urge to duck down, so she would be hidden behind the desk. Whoever looked would find the desk empty, figure the ring of the bell had been imagined and return to work, so Laura could escape. But then the door opened. Instead of the miserable, wizened creature she had expected, a cute boy no older than Laura emerged. Hi there, he smiled broadly, leaning forward on the desk in a casual, almost jaunty manner. I'm Buck. What can I do for you? The contrast between this boy and Laura's expectations were so great that at first she couldn't even respond. For a long moment, Laura even forgot she was in a hospital. As Buck's smile widened with amusement, she realized she was gaping at him. Oh, sorry, she blurted out, certain she was blushing. But her eyes were still locked with his, and she was rendered speechless as she drank in his features, attractive with a thick mop of jet black hair and an easy smile. He looked thin enough to be beaten by the scarecrow at arm wrestling, but he did not hold himself like a 90-pound weakling. She closed her eyes tightly and shook her head. You're inquiring about a job, Laura reminded herself, not trying to make a love connection. Besides, you're on the rebound, remember? With that sobering thought, Laura's mind cleared and she was able to open her eyes again, her priorities straight and her goals in plain sight. Hi, she said in the confident, you want to give me a job, don't you, voice that she had rehearsed for hours. I'm Laura Walcott. I'm responding to the help wanted ad in yesterday's paper. As soon as Laura said the words, help wanted, Buck winced. I'm sorry, Laura Walcott, but uh, the position's been filled. His tone of voice was a parody of hers, but he was not trying to be unkind. And when Laura crumpled slightly at the disappointing news, his expression turned sincerely apologetic. Then suddenly he seemed to recognize her and asked, Aren't you a lifeguard down at the pool? I was, Laura said, aware that her bitterness was audible. But the BPR Bureau of Parks and Recreations cut the budget and I got laid off. Buck shook his head sympathetically. That sucks. You don't know the half of it, Laura agreed. It was a complicated, ugly mess, and now I have to run all over town looking for work. The only other place that's got a part-time job advertised is a store at the mall, and I'll never get that. That's not a very positive attitude, Buck pointed out. One of the assistant managers is a girl I know, and we don't get along, to put it mildly. Ah, I could handle working with her if I got hired, Laura explained. But I think she's involved in the hiring process, so I'm sunk. I see, Buck nodded seriously. You seem awfully anxious to land a job. You need to save up for school or something? Well... Laura's voice trailed off. She was not sure of what to say. Whether he knew it or not, that was a very personal question. Buck seemed to pick up on her hesitation. He withdrew the question. Sorry, none of my business. There was an awkward pause, then Buck thrust out a hand toward Laura. I'm Buck Lochner, by the way. Laura took his hand and they shook. Well, Buck, job or not, it's good to meet you. Glad you think so, he said sincerely. I just moved into town, to a house on Elm Street. Not near the old Thompson house, I hope. She held her breath. Anywhere within ten blocks of that place would be too close for comfort for her. Buck laughed. <laughs> you mean the local haunted house? It's down the street a ways. Well, be careful, Laura warned. Too late, he declared soberly. It got me already. What do you mean? Laura asked, fearful that he wasn't taking the danger seriously. When exploring last week after I heard about the place, thought I was watching where I was stepping, but my foot went through a rotted floorboard, and wham! I came this close. Buck held up a thumb and forefinger about three inches apart to bash in my head in. Twisted my ankle pretty bad. Laura's eyes went wide. You got off lucky. That place is cursed. She looked at the twinkle in Buck's eye. I'm all right, Buck said, apparently wanting to change the subject. Laura decided to drop it. Buck was new in town. 
He'd learn soon enough. Anyone who moved to Springwood learned eventually. That is, if they lived. So have you met anyone here yet? She asked. Not really. I came after school ended. You're really the first person my age I've met. You'll be a senior this fall? Laura asked. Buck nodded. Yeah. It's going to be weird being a senior not knowing anyone. Well, you know me, she pointed out, and I can introduce you to tons of other kids. That would be great, Buck said excitedly. Then a sly look stole over his face. But only if they're as cool as you. Laura was blushing once more, but still managed to smile and say, I don't know if that is possible, but my friends come pretty close. In fact, my best friend Doug is having a party tonight. You could come if you want. Cool, Buck was thrilled, but then he stopped short. This Doug guy, is he your boyfriend? Normally, Laura would have laughed off the question, but because of recent events, she couldn't help but sigh with frustration. No, Doug and I are just old best friends. I am currently and happily unattached. Buck smiled. Then I could go with you? He asked a little nervously. I have a car and I could pick you up. It sounded like a fine idea to Laura. My younger sister might need to come with us. Would that be all right? Buck didn't blink an eye. Of course. The more the merrier. What's your sister's name? Shelby. She's really my best friend. Closer than Doug, even. A whole series of images flashed through Laura's mind, but she couldn't possibly talk about it. She hardly knew Buck. Instead, she simply explained, We've been through a lot together. The statement seemed to make Buck wonder, but he let it pass. Anyway, she's 14, but not like a baby or anything. We're a lot alike, but she's more of a bookworm. I'm trying to get her to be more social, so I've been inviting her out with me this summer. Neat. I wish I'd had a big brother who'd done that for me. Heck, <laughs> I wish I had any sibling at all. Only child? Laura asked. Yep. Actually, it's just me and my dad. Resignation sounded in his voice in a distant melancholy. I know how it is, Laura said sympathetically. It's just me and Shelby and our mom. Been that way for a long time. Buck was only slightly comforted. Well, at least you have your sister, he muttered. Then, realizing how he sounded, he forced a smile back onto his face. Cue the violins! Yikes! He clapped his hands together, then rubbed them hard against each other. Listen, I gotta get back to work, but I'm off at six. Can I call you after that? That would be great. She took a scrap of paper from her purse and scribbled on it. Here's my number. She smiled and felt herself blush yet again. Talk to you, Buck said. Then he watched as Laura turned and started toward the elevators. Laura felt an unusual sense of calm come over her. Meeting a boy like Buck seemed to lift her out of her usual sea of fears. It was a feeling she liked very much, and after a day like today had been, which came after a week like last week had been, it was just the kind of feeling she needed and deserved. Glancing over her shoulder, Laura saw that Buck was still watching her. He immediately started moving off, pretending he had not been caught staring. Laura smiled and waved. Buck responded with an embarrassed wave of his own. Back in the administrative office, Buck stood next to the desk as if rooted to the floor. He stared, trance-like, at the spot where Laura had stood. The rest of the day would be unbearable now. Though he had tried to conceal his feelings, the fact was he had fallen utterly in love with Laura the first moment he had laid eyes on her. It had pained him more than she would ever know when he had told her there was no job available for her. There was nothing he could possibly want more than to have her as a co-worker. Buck's eyes narrowed as the wheels of his mind began to turn.
Okay, Slashaholics, happy Halloween. This has been the prologue in chapter one of book number 57 for the channel, Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror, Help Wanted by David Bergantino. Not a lot going on. We don't really know much yet since, you know, we just got the first chapter in after Freddy's prologue introducing the story. But I gotta tell you, I don't trust this Buck character. He seems a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, in my opinion. I mean, he just met the girl, and he's sitting there thinking he's utterly and fully in love with her. And it ends with him, like his brain ticking away, thinking, thinking up, like, what the hell is it, what the hell is he thinking? What is he trying to think up, you know? And, uh, so yeah, I, I don't like this Buck character, as, maybe that'll change when we get to know him better. Maybe it's innocent, young, love at first sight. But to me, just from this one chapter, it seems like he's a little bit creepy. But, we'll see what happens. I'm curious to see what uh, the last week was like for our protagonist, Laura. Uh, what what happened with her job as a uh, lifeguard. And how Buck recognized her if he just moved to town. You know, has he been going to the pool a lot? What's going on with that? Um, yeah, just he seems kind of creepy, you know. There's not a whole lot to say after this chapter. Curious to see what happens when they go to the party together. That'll be interesting to see how these characters develop together. Uh, see what's up with this younger sister and if that has something to do with the last bad week that uh, Laura had because she said like when she mentioned her sister and everything a bunch of memories came back or whatever so yeah I'm I'm curious to dive into this book just the the chapter one alone is enough to hook me and I hope you all enjoyed it too it's a short upload today I just wanted to put out at least the prologue in chapter one uh, for Halloween I said we were going to do the three remaining David Bergantino Tales of Terror books back to back to back in October. We knocked out Virtual Terror and Twice Burned, and I wanted to at least get the prologue in Chapter 1 of Help Wanted out before the month was over, and I thought Halloween was the perfect day to do that. I'll be back very soon uh, with more of this book. It's sad that this is the last one uh, by David Bergantino for the channel, uh, but there are two more Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror books, uh, that were written before the ones David put out, and they were written by a guy, guy named Bruce Richards. I'm curious to see the differences in the writing style and stuff, but I really, really enjoy David's work, and uh, I cannot wait to get more detail in this book, get some more chapters under our belt, so we can start guessing who's possessed or whatever. But if I, like, if I had to guess right now, I would say Buck, just because he seems weird and strange, and he moved in to a house on Elm Street, and... He was in the old Thompson house recently, and he hit his head. I mean, what if that was uh, when Freddy took possession of him or something? Who knows, you know? We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so I'll be back really soon with more, guys. Uh, until then, thank you for listening. Have a very happy, safe, and fun Halloween. Go and get the hell scared out of you. A lot of stuff dropped on the channel today. Uh, the new episode of Slash Tracks is out. Um, I'm going to show a little funny clip at the end here. Uh, <laughs> what it is, is at the end of the movie Jacko that we riffed on, uh, in episode 10 of Slash Tracks, uh, the end credits show, like, clips from the movie, and then it freezes on, on that clip, and it says the name of the actor in the scene, and we said that was like a sitcom, so I threw together a funny little sitcom video, uh, like a, like the opening of a sitcom for Jacko, and, uh, I used those end credits, threw in a couple things, uh, from slash tracks like Master Evil, me and Alex, and uh, Mother Evil, Master Evil's mom, and uh, threw in a couple other old sitcom references for fun. It's pretty cute. I'll, I'll put it at the end there. I think you'll get a good laugh out of it. But check out Slash Tracks episode 10. Uh, it, the whole movie of Jacko's there. You don't have to use your own copy and listen to our. You don't have to play our riff commentary and play the movie on a separate screen or whatever at the same time like uh, some of the episodes. This one, we were able to put the whole movie in the episode with our riff commentary track playing over it. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Check that out. Also, there's a new episode of Out of Print Slashers up. Uh, episode number 31, we talked to Nicholas Grabowski, the author of Halloween 4 for that episode. Uh, there's a new episode of After the Slash podcast that's a Patreon exclusive. Uh, so on the Patreon channel, you, can, you get a weekly uh, exclusive podcast called After the Slash. This was episode 30. It dropped today. I also put out a narration of The Raven, and I include uh, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and I included uh, my narration from last Halloween of The Telltale Heart. So it's a double narration of Edgar Allan Poe I dropped today on the channel. 
Uh, there's a new chapter of Gremlins coming out this uh, this evening, chapter 18, the penultimate upload for that book. And uh, this right here, Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror, Help Wanted. So it's a hell of a Halloween, lots of content on the channel. Uh, thank you all so much. Pleasant dreams! And uh, I'll see you next time. Check out this little uh, funny sitcom thing from Jacko, and then check out uh, episode 10 of Slash Tracks. I think you'll get a good laugh. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. This whole world confuses me. Clouds as mean as you've ever seen. And a bird who knows your tree. Then a little voice inside you. Stay